Welcome and hello. This is Caffeine Zombies with some bite-sized news. Today is July 15th, 2024. We'll be going over what it means to be compassionate to your enemy while not being sympathetic, continuing developments of the Israeli war, EU versus Axe and Judge Eileen Cannon drops yet another obstacle in the way of justice. <laughs> Let's get started. Holy hell, people, as a liberal, we're supposed to be the party who does not advocate nor celebrate the death of even convicted murderers locked away in prison. We do not advocate that they suffer cruel or unusual punishments, regardless of what they did to get there. Trump conspired to get a fraudulent slate of electors certified against the will of the American people, not just once, but seven times, after stoking false claims of election fraud, after lying to people again and again and again about these known false claims. Yes. All of that is true, and he deserves to go to prison for a long, long time, the rest of his life, in fact. And you can just keep stacking on things from his fraud cases, being convicted civilly of sexual assault that New York says meets the definition of rape, his fraudulent school, the illegal use of funds from his nonprofit organizations, his... and much, much more, all the way back into the 80s at the very least. However, he does not deserve to be assassinated, and the person in the crowd didn't either. You can dislike them, hate them even, but as a liberal, we are supposed to be the people of compassion, even against those accused and convicted of harsh, terrible crimes. We stand for the little humanity they may have left, and we don't do it because we are sympathetic or think them good people, or that they may even turn into good people down the road, so let's just give them a pass. No, we don't do it for any of those reasons. We do it because we believe that how you stand in the world when there are obstacles is what makes and defines your character. And ours includes compassion for the worst of us. Marjorie Taylor Greene, she accused without evidence Biden and his administration and all of Democrats. Penny Johnson insults the women's secret service agents who put their life in the way of his chosen candidate. He can only see MSNBC suspending their morning Joe show as somehow evil. These people can't help themselves. They're so used to deflecting, lying, and not taking accountability for anything that they celebrate with lies and violence and can't even concede when the President of the United States leads the way in order to calm these things down. Biden put his campaign on pause, telling people to calm the fuck down and calling his opponent just to connect and make sure him and his family was okay after the attack. We should not be those conservatives. The man killed in the audience at the Trump rally was a volunteer fighter fighter. That means there's some aspect of him, regardless of what his allegiances show, that was worth our compassion for his family that survived him. You don't have to agree with his politics. I don't, certainly. You don't have to agree with his allegiances. I don't, certainly. I think they were probably dumb and ignorant of what's going on, really, in the United States. But I can feel for his family that now suffer without him. Keep your stance about policies you support, about laws you wish were being enforced against Trump and his co-conspirators, but we don't need to celebrate the violence that takes place alongside it. At this time, there's not really any more known about the motives of Thomas Matthew Crooks, who on Saturday, July 13th, shot at Trump and killed a supporter behind him and injured two others. We know nothing else, really. Conjecture right now about who did it, conspiracies, whether it was staged or not, do not help the situation. Be better. The Israeli government said on Saturday they performed an airstrike targeting a Hamas leader. In their wake of destruction, they killed 90 people and wounded over 300 more. Their target, one man, Mohammed Diaf, he's been a leader of terrorist organizations for decades and is currently a top commander in Hamas. He's considered incredibly shadowy and almost like a boogeyman. His whereabouts, health, and existence seems up for question at any point in time. Even after the airstrike, whether they got him or not is still undecided. Meanwhile, this airstrike could also throw a wrench in the ceasefire talks, like so many things seem to do these days. It's almost impossible to ascertain this person's actual death, and Netanyahu has said that these top leaders are all marked for death, and that he won't negotiate a ceasefire until Israeli military goals are met. If that includes Diaz's death, well, the violence will probably continue as long as Netanyahu wants. The European Union called out the blue check system on X as a violation of the EU's Digital Services Act law made in 2020. Two, 
This law requires that companies be transparent and accountable for what it presents. In this case, the blue checks can make someone think that X has done some sort of verification or validation process. But the fact is that I could, for instance, do something like pay for a blue check next to my account and claim to be Elon Musk and then go online and say some random bullshit. And this would give the impression that the bullshit I was spewing was his bullshit. And the concern is there's no verification process. So users can't be sure the bullshit they're reading came from the actual person with the checks instead of some random guy on YouTube. Elon Musk hit back to the EU not to defend the blue checks, but to offer a red herring of the EU offered us a secret deal. And the EU's Thierry Breton, the current commissioner for internal marketing of the European Union, simply hit back with a, you're lying and we'll see you in court or not if you comply with the law. Elon Musk has hit back with some bluster, but Thierry Breton also has brought cases against Apple, Google, Meta, and in the past he gets results. If Elon Musk thinks his bombastic Trumpian rhetoric will work in the EU like it does in the United States, who doesn't have any of these kinds of protections, he'll soon be paying some kind of major fine or worse. I'd say good luck to the EU, but I don't think they need it. And finally, Judge Eileen Cannon offered a bombshell of a ruling today, albeit not a specifically surprising one. She in indicated that Jack Smith was illegally appointed as special counsel. I'm not a lawyer nor a judge. Let's get that out of the way first. But when looking this up, it seemed to go against precedent. There's just a few times in which in the United States, a special counsel has been appointed in such a way that would stand against Eileen's reading of what was possible. Just for example, in 1875, special counsel was appointed by Ulysses S. Grant to investigate the Whiskey Ring scandal. In 1881, James Garfield appointed a special counsel to investigate the Star Route scandal. In 1921, Calvin Coolidge appointed two special counsels. 1952, Harry Truman to investigate the IRS. In 1973, a special counsel appointed to investigate the Watergate scandal through a few more up until 1975. In 1978, specific rules were even created surrounding special counsels called the Ethics and Government Act. Later, the Supreme Court ruled these constitutional in the case Morrison v. Olson in 1992 1994, even when technically special counsel's provisions weren't even in force. Whitewater was investigated by special counsel and it upheld. Ken Starr going after Clinton 1999 for investigators of FBI with the Waco incident in 2003. George Bush investigating the Plame Affair 2017. Robert Mueller with the Russian interference of 2016 presidential election. 2020, William Barr as Trump's own attorney general for the John Durham investigation. 2022, Merrick Garland appointed Jack Smith into Donald Trump's actions that resulted in the January 6th attack on the Capitol. And this is the case that Eileen Cannon was overseeing with the handling of classified documents. 2023, Merrick Garland appointed Robert Hurd to investigate Joe Biden's storage of classified materials. In 2023, again, Merrick Garland appointed David Weiss to investigate Hunter Biden's laptop resulting in tax evasion and firearm offenses. So yeah. Within about 10 minutes of research, there's a long, long, long precedent, including things that the conservatives have definitely supported, many judges, and the Supreme Court even have supported. But that's not the point. The point was to delay the case even more to get it over the hurdle of the November election time frame and prevent Donald Trump from seeing criminal charges before he can attempt to pardon himself or get things otherwise dismissed because he may be the seated president at the time. And that's it for today. Be compassionate, don't be dumb like Elon Musk, and be better than Eileen Cannon. Pretty easy for the road forward. Oh yeah, and also the Republican National Convention started today and Trump appointed J.D. Vance as VP. We might do something more on J.D. Vance later. Have a good one.